Before I tell you about what happened on New Year's Eve 2023, and yes, 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 I promise it will be in this video. It's actually a story that I'm looking forward to telling, right? Nothing bad happened. Well, <laughs> um, anyway, before I tell that story, I just want to quickly tell the story of, or just quickly tell about the FaceTime that Peter and I had for Christmas because... Well, geez, this is my boyfriend of however many months, years. And um, that's what normal, healthy couples do when they are apart on the holidays. They call each other. Even better with technology, they FaceTime each other. So perhaps one of you can help me understand why when I FaceTimed Peter on Christmas, and I said, quite naturally, might I add, it wasn't something that I really felt was that out of the ordinary, but I literally said, oh, I hope we can be together next year. I wish we could be together. I didn't even say next year. I said, oh, I wish we could be together, right? Because it's nothing, nothing. The look that he gave me when I said that was just so like, I mean, it would be laughable if it wasn't pathetic. And, I, and I'm trying not so hard to like have some sympathy because you have to realize like this guy usually has a lot of confidence. Like he goes around acting like, you know, like he's so sick with it all the time. Like, you know, I, I've come to realize that a lot of that is very fake. Um, let me, let me stop while I'm ahead. But all, all of that was gone. Like all it took was me saying something as simple as, I wish we were together for Christmas. And he looked like, he, he looked like scared for his life, like a deer in the headlights, like he was terrified. And I, again, if it, it was, it would be laughable if it wasn't so pathetic. And so in my head, I'm thinking like, holy shit, what did I do? Like, what did I do? It's Christmas. I literally said that we could be together. Um, it just, it was really awkward. Like it was kind of just like, okay, I love you. Bye. And he, he saw how I, he saw, he could tell my reaction and I, I didn't know how to react. I was just like, again, I don't think that's something that normal. And I was like, you know what? This is the holidays. If you want to be weird about this, you do, you dude. Like, go, go on and be weird, you know, like, fuck. And then, so we got off the phone and I honestly don't even remember how the conversation and all I remember was his battered reaction to his boyfriend wishing him a merry fucking Christmas, wishing they could be fucking together for fucking Christmas. And he gives me this reaction like he just fucking, like he's been abused, his, like he's been in an abusive relationship and he's on the phone with his pimp or something. Um, he could tell how bothered I was and he could tell that, again, what the fuck did I do to make, to give you this like reaction? So immediately he texted me. He's like, I'm sorry, babe. You know, it's just, um, I, I, I have a hard time with feelings and there's a lot of people here. So he, he knew that he had to like do something. So just throwing that out there. So no, just remember that. That was Christmas Eve. Christmas. Christmas. Let's fast forward to New Year's Eve. So New Year's Eve, Peter and I had plans to go bar hopping with his friends in... Russian Hill, Knob Hill. So we're gonna go on Polk Street. And if you know San Francisco, walk long enough on Polk Street, you go through both neighborhoods, right? The intersection of Knob Hill and Russian Hill. Um, I had a pretty good idea of what we could do that would be fun, but hey, you know, don't listen to the native San Franciscan. And you know what, I don't drink. So maybe my, my advice and uh, encouragement wasn't the soundest, but, and I don't even know why I say that because honestly it was a good time. So we started out at one bar right in the middle. I'm wearing my white tuxedo jacket that I last wore in Puerto Rico because it's New Year's Eve and I want to look good. I'm beautiful. We're beautiful, right? Everybody's complimenting us. And we are a group of about eight to 10. There's about eight to 10 of us. And so... There's a couple there that I'm not going to give everybody names because it's just that is not necessary. So there's a couple there, a straight couple, like I should say that, right? Because you can't just assume, right? Especially because the couple that we're talking about is a gay couple. So Peter and I, straight couple, Tamara, Glenda, Miley, 
Miley's boyfriend doesn't come out. That's that's like his thing. He has a lot of social anxiety. Maybe that's why Miley and Peter have their little relationship. I don't know. And then there was somebody else that I had never met before who it turns out when when someone's a real native San Franciscan, it just takes a couple questions to find out who you all have in common. So it turns out we had people who went to high school, we knew in common that I went, that we went to high school together, that we, people we knew in common from high school, just put that because we did not go to high school together. I'm going to call him Hamid. I'm going to call him Hamid. So it's Hamid, myself, Peter, I just described everyone who was there. We started out at one bar and um, McTavern's, I, I don't know the names of bars, uh, but it, it's a very, it's a pretty well known, I want to say Bush and Polk. Bush and Polk, and then we walked down Polk Street and we got to another bar, a very well known one. Let's just say it's not Beijing. Not Beijing! And we go inside, and mind you, we're about eight to ten deep, and so we go over to the bar, everybody orders drinks, which is what you do at a bar, right? So here's the deal. So we go over to the bar, and again, it's a significant group of us, but it's not like we're lounging, everybody orders a drink, and I guess what had happened was is that we took over a spot that somebody had left for like two seconds, and then they came back from the bathroom, and I guess their drink and stuff was there. Nobody touched the drink, but the spot was taken. So this guy comes back, flustered straight guy, just for lack of a, I don't know, how old was this guy? 40s, 50s, it was very apparent, and you'll see why I say this, but it became apparent that this guy was a regular. So he comes back and he starts bitching about his seat being gone. Mind you, Peter is sitting in his new seat. I don't think I'm sitting, I'm like standing. So he says, he said, hey, like very, very aggressively, like, hey, you're sitting in my seat. Peter took this so much better than I would have because y'all know I would have clapped right back. Bitch, move your meat, lose your seat, motherfucker. Peter, so Peter very nicely says, I believe he said something along the lines of, well, can I just like, you know, can I just pay for my drink and, and move? He's like, no, nah, dude, again, very aggressively. And this is where he moved to put hands on Peter. Again, this is where I saw red, so I don't quite remember if he just put like his arm, his hand on his arm, or if he went like this. I don't quite remember. What I do know is that both me and Hamid, it was as though like, I don't know, like a light bolt just hit us both, boop, because we stood on business. We got up, both of us, boop, and we're like, oh, say what? So again, little scared little man like ran, ran with his fucking tail between his legs, back the fuck up before he got knocked the fuck up because that was gonna happen real fucking quick. Bar managers come over, they understand the situation. Here's the deal, listen really fucking quickly, Re really fucking clearly, mind you, this didn't happen at Beijing's. You know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about, okay? Okay? So the bar manager comes over, bar manager, bar man, whatever. Due to what had happened, he very quickly analyzed the scene, he decided to comp Peter's drink, and we're thinking, okay, fine. Right? Tensions high. Let's finish the drinks. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, thanks for comping my man's drink, right? Side note. Later on, Peter referred to Hamid and myself as his knights in shining armor. And I'm not going to lie to you when I say that that kind of made me feel some type of way because I'm like, no, I'm your knight in shining armor. Fine. Mo both of us got up because we were ready to stand on business, but I'm the one that's with you. I'm the one that's, I should be your knight in shining armor. So I'm not going to lie to you. That kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Anyway, you know, what the, you know what these fuckers did? What this bastard ass establishment decided to do after all that that just went down? They added Peter's drink to the other tab. So it turns out that the drink was not comped. Mind you, everybody in our group, we are all like nobody's rich here. We all have worked like, you know, working class, second, third job. So what I'm getting at is that we're generous tippers too. We're not scrubs. I'll probably say this again, but as much as, and it's weird that I'm bringing it up now, but it is what it is. As, um, as much of a trash person as Peter is, which you'll see that shortly, as much of a like not good person as he is, he has somehow attracted some amazing, awesome friends. And I will talk more about that a little bit later, but I honestly love his group of friends. I don't know how on earth he ever attracted them because if he, treat, if he treats people the way that he treats me, he's not going to keep these kinds of people in his life for much longer, but he has amazing, incredible friends. 
So anyway, anyway, we leave. I'm furious. Go on, go on and read reviews that I wrote because I write honest reviews because small businesses, huh, you take my money, but you're going to treat me like that? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, 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 I drop it after a couple blocks because I'm like, listen, again, I told you I was whimpering. Like, I'm not going to let this ruin my night. So we actually ended up back at the previous bar, which I think is McTeague's. That's the name of the bar. And we spent the rest of the night there. They had an awesome dance floor. Actually, right next door to McTeague's is where we were dancing. And I totally forgot the name of that place. But the night was great. Midnight kiss. Full nine yards. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to 2024. And if I've, if, I know I've already said this a million times, but if the drama and things start, like if they picked up during 2023, whoo, just you wait until you see what 2024 brings. Because, yeah. See you in the next video.